When the spirit of truth is, is come, he will teach you all truth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Throughout the ages, mankind has always sought and often failed to find the truth, especially the truth about our origins or our destiny, and indeed about all things. One of my brothers was telling me recently of a man he knows who believes that we were created by aliens simply because he saw some TV program to that effect. I once met a fellow who was convinced that hell was actually kind of a neat place precisely because apparently there is some TV show to that effect. God is the measure of all truth. He's the creator of all truth, the creator of reality itself. The curse of the modern world, which has rejected God, the only source of truth, is precisely that people now believe anyone and everything. If you have a few letters after your name, because you went to college, or because you make a lot of money, or if you are a celebrity, then now everything you say is gospel truth. It is one of the great curses of our time that everyone believes anything because they have rejected the source of truth. When the spirit of truth is come, he will teach you all truth. God himself has taught the truth to his church. It's an absolutely tremendous gift. It puts us into reality. We can see it for what it really is. The greatest danger to man, what he fears the most, is the unknown. Catholics, we know the truth of reality. We know where we fit into that reality. And that confers upon us a tremendous strength, which nothing in this world can overcome. We can view all things in the light of faith. We can see the incredible value of those things that the world considers valueless. And we can also see the pettiness of all that the world worships. God has taught his church the truth. And this Catholic truth never changes because God never changes. Every best gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no change nor shadow of alteration. Having a real spirit of faith gives one a strength, a solidity. It causes one to be based on unchanging principles, not on fickle sentiment or imperfect human knowledge. Our Lord says, heaven and earth can pass away, but my word shall not pass away. God said this, this truth, and the world can fail and die, but it remains true. What an incredible strength and confidence that brings. God has given the church his spirit who teaches us all truth, and his spirit will remain with the church forever. God has taught us the truth, and as long as we remain affixed to that truth and immersed in it, Ours is truly an enviable lot. But then we come to our days. What are we to do when all this seems turned on its head? It is the Society of St. Pius X's position that the church after Vatican II the magisterium after Vatican II does not teach what the church used to teach. How is that possible? First, we have to answer the objection, is it even true? How can the society claim that Vatican II and all the magisterium afterwards has taught errors? We are told by some that the society is not the recipient of the Holy Ghost. 
he was promised to the church magisterium to make such judgments, not to us. And that is absolutely true. Of course, the society is not infallible. Of course, it has no right to judge what is the truth received from God. God gave that right to his magisterium and to no one else. Only the church magisterium has received from God the ability to properly determine and interpret God's own truth. And for centuries, it has done so. The magisterium has faithfully taught the truth God entrusted to it and faithfully interpreted it. The problem is that, precisely, we are in a situation where the Second Vatican Council does indeed contradict the very previous magisterium itself. That seems like a very strong statement that one ought to back up. I will read a series of quotations. They are to be grouped in pairs. The first of each pair comes from a traditional document, something that was written by some pope or some council. The second group of each, in each pair, it comes from a document of Vatican II. So first, a quote from a traditional document. Indifferentism gives rise to that absurd and erroneous proposition which claims that liberty of conscience must be maintained for everyone. It spreads ruin in sacred and civil affairs. And now, a quote from Vatican II. The demand is increasingly made that men should act on their own judgment. This demand for freedom regards, in the first place, the free exercise of religion in society. This Vatican Council takes note of these desires. It declares them to be greatly in accord with truth and justice. Again, a traditional document. It is condemned that liberty of conscience and worship is each man's personal right, and that every man is free to embrace and profess that religion which he shall consider true. And now from Vatican II, this Vatican Council declares that the human person has a right to religious freedom. Again, a traditional document. Ecumenical efforts can meet with no kind of approval among Catholics. They presuppose the erroneous view that all religions are more or less good and praiseworthy inasmuch as all give expression to that innate sense which leads men to God. And then, the church rejects nothing that is true and holy in these religions. She regards with sincere reverence those ways of conduct and of life, those precepts and teaching which often reflect a ray of that truth which enlightens all men. Lastly, and perhaps most strongly, from a traditional document, worship in common with non-Catholic religions must be entirely avoided. And then from a Vatican II document, some worship in common, given suitable circumstances, is not only possible, but to be encouraged. Every one of these is a direct quotation. And there are many others. I've selected these for their brevity. And yet we are told that this doctrine has changed nothing from the traditional doctrine. We are supposed to believe that. The two are the same. But this is not even on the level of the faith. This is basic logic. In logic, we know that when you have two contradictory statements, two statements that contradict one another, if one is true, the other is necessarily false. If I say something is a certain way and another says it is not that way, both of us can't be right. One of us is right, one of us is wrong. One is true, the other is false. So which is it? 
if we must accept the teachings of the Second Vatican Council in their full force, meaning in themselves and not with a hundred different qualifications to render them palatable to the traditional mind, if we accept them in themselves, then we are forced, we are faced with the conclusion that for centuries the church was in error and we have only just now got it right. Catholic truth cannot change because God cannot change. It may become unpopular just as God is sometimes very unpopular, but it cannot change. And so the society, we don't judge the modern magisterium. We have no right to do so, nor do we have any need to do so, for the previous magisterium has already judged it. The propositions it, se it sets forth have already been condemned. So that is the case. There is this contradiction. But now, for a practical attitude, what are we to do about this? Does this mean that the church has failed? No, it cannot fail. It has the promise of Almighty God that it cannot fail. Unfortunately, we must acknowledge that many of its leaders are not being faithful to their divine mandate. But the church has not failed. She will weather this storm as she has all others in the past. Christ told us that there would be struggles, that there would be both wheat and cockle in the church. We must not be scandalized when we find this cockle present, even present in high places. But at the same time, the church remains the bride of our Lord Jesus Christ, and he is a most faithful spouse. He said he would not allow the church to fail, and we must trust him in this. But still, what are we to do? We must adhere to and teach what the church has always taught. I said earlier that some say the society is not the recipient of the Holy Ghost. And this is true. As the society, we are not the ones to whom he was promised. He was promised to the whole church. But as members of the church teaching, the Ecclesia Docens, repeating what the church has always taught, then we partake in the same privileges that the ordinary magisterium throughout the centuries has always possessed. So long as we teach what the church has always taught, and only so long as we do that, we are the recipients of this magnificent gift, God himself protecting us and guiding us in the truth. We have to approach our Catholic truth with a great spirit of humility. It does not belong to us. It belongs to God. And no one can change it. When we preach, when we teach, and this applies especially for the seminarians, we must teach the truth that God has given us. Beware of searching for novelties. This is the spirit of the modern world, and this is the spirit that prepared the way for Vatican II. It is not the spirit of God in whom there is no change nor shadow of alteration. God forms us to be his priests, to be miniature copies of himself, which means we have to give the people nothing other than what God has already given us. To do otherwise is not to give them God. To do otherwise is not to teach the truth, but to teach error. And the world, the world doesn't need us to teach error. It already has plenty of others who are doing that. They are a dime a dozen. 
The world needs the truth. And it is dying for the lack of it. We have to teach that truth, the truth the church has always taught. And of course, we have to pray. Pray that we may be kept faithful to our Catholic truth. Our need of God's help in this is absolute. No human being is capable of fidelity by themselves. Only God can grant that grace. Only God can teach the truth and maintain us in the truth. For our part, we have to keep that prayerful fidelity to God, begging him for that grace of fidelity. And pray also for those who should be leading the church, that they may return to their divine mandate to teach the truth unadulterated by popular fancies. Let us keep that great confidence in the spouse of the church, our Lord Jesus Christ, in his mother, the Blessed Virgin. And let us keep that confidence in what the church has always taught. Fidelity to that is the only thing that will save this world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.